The new Kill Team Orcterius box set is pretty cool. I haven't played the game yet, but I just really like these products that fall into what I like to call the play set product range. It really appeals to the toy collector in me that I not only get a force of orcs, but also a dollhouse for them to live in, an invading force of gas mask guys, the rules, some dice, a playmat, just everything. It's a playset, and I just love that. I was painting these during Orktober, so I had both Halloween and fall colors on my mind. I was looking for some retro Halloween inspiration when I came across this beautiful piece of artwork, which I think just fully encapsulates my nostalgia for the late 80s, early 90s Halloween merchandise and commercials. Realizing that I wanted to use a bright lime green for the basis of my orc skin tones anyway, I quickly came up with a plan for how to capture the feeling of this artwork on my orcs. The main two colors on the figures would be lime green and this reddish pumpkin orange. And to complement these, I would also make liberal use of black, white, a purplish gradient like in the background of this artwork, with occasional pops of brown, red, and yellow like in the leaves at the bottom of the artwork. Why bother coming up with your own color schemes when you can just steal from other people? Wait a second, you just stolen my purple and orange paint scheme. Oh, oops. I didn't mean steal from other hub YouTubers. I'm onto you, Hal. That would probably make a good clickbait thumbnail though, wouldn't it? Unbelievable. Sorry, I'm a YouTuber. I can't resist a good juicy clickbait thumbnail. But yeah, I, I guess it is kind of similar to Guy's or color scheme. Hope he doesn't try and send me a cease and desist order or something. <laughs> so going along with the playset nature of this cardboard board game, I thought it would be fun to have all the bases match the board that comes with the game. So a uh, sandy wasteland with occasional scrap metal buried underneath. Basic Mad Max type stuff. And I probably could have used bits from my bits collection to make all the scrap metal for the bases, but instead to celebrate Orktober, I thought it might be fun to do the orky thing and build all of our scrap out of scrap. Well, not exactly scrap. I used plastic hard. Now, if you're a veteran hobbyist, you're probably familiar with this stuff. It's just sheets and tubes of plastic of various sizes and shapes that you can find on the shelves of your local model railway store. It's easy to cut, carve, and shape using just your hobby knife, and you can use plastic glue to glue it together or to Games Workshop models because it's made of polystyrene, I think. I started out by cutting some pieces into random shapes with my hobby knife. First cutting up some plates, and then cutting some to have spiked edges and give it that real orky look. I then applied these plates randomly to the bases using plastic cement. Then in order to create some bolts and rivets, I cut up pieces of a plastic hard dowel to create these little uh, pepperoni slices. These might be a bit big for screws or rivets, but it seems like the sort of thing an orc would make. For some variety, I also used these half dowels to create the impression of buried pipes or pipelines. And I also used some lengths of copper wire to go alongside these to create the impression of an even more subtle uh, wiring or pipe work that runs alongside the larger pipes. And then I used super glue to glue these down because plastic glue is not gonna work on metal. Once the glue was dry, I used my knife to trim off the excess scrap along the edges of the bases and at the same time, I used my knife to cut some texture into the metal, such as adding this little groove into some of the rivets, making them look like these massive screws that had been drilled down into the metal plates. And for an even more subtle effect, I used my knife to bore out some little holes in the metal plates where screws might once have been. I also used my knife to just give most of the plates a nice little scratching up, but I forgot to film that part. Once all the glue was fully dry, I used basing paste to cover all the parts of the base that didn't have scrap on them, as well as covering up some of the parts that do have scrap on them to give the impression of a junkyard with sand covering over layers and layers of scrap metal. I did this to every one of the orc bases, probably spending way too long in the process, but once everything was dry, I started priming. I primed the models first in black, followed up by a light spray from above in a magenta color, because I think most of the colors I'll be using here will benefit from a magenta undertone. 
For more on why I used a magenta undercoat for these models, you should check out my video on CMYK color theory if you want to learn a little bit more about the colors I'm using in this video and why I use them in the order that I'm using them. Once this was done, I gave all my models my typical white spray from above and then let all of the models dry for a full 24 hours before applying any other paint to the models. I started out with a fluorescent magenta ink, just letting it seep into all the crevices as well as to all of the veins on the figure, pretty much just putting it anywhere the skin is thinnest and we might see some blood or redness show through the skin. I then used a thin down mix of Iand and Yellow to glaze on the base coat over the skin. This has the effect of turning all of the magenta parts red and orange and making the black and white parts look like a pale green skin tone. This was a total experiment on my part, but I ended up really liking the effect that it gives. On some of the orcs, I wanted a little bit more variety in their skin tones, so I blended in just a little bit of Achelian green onto the parts where the skin would be thickest and we would see the least blood showing through the skin. With the skin tones more or less complete, I had a little bit of fun blocking in the other main colors on the figures. Starting out by blocking in some of the larger areas with orange and purple, and making sure to reference our key art a lot while painting to, to make sure I was getting the right mix to give off that Halloween-y vibe that I wanted. While I was doing this, I made sure to leave lots of areas in between the brightly colored areas to paint in black and white, because again, referencing the art, we want to include lots of black and white to give it that Halloween-y feel. I painted almost all the leather and metal parts with a thin down glaze of black, making sure to get as much black as possible into as many of the recesses of the model as possible. I then used Pale Sand's big sister, Dark Sand, to base coat all of the parts I wanted to be white. And again, the parts that I wanted to be white were just determined by either painting things that made sense to be white, such as skull emblems, strings, bandages, or just putting some white in places I thought needed a bit of contrast from all of the black. I also base coated the flames in the f on the flamethrower in this color to be painted later. Next up, I used a glaze of Hull Red, which is one of my favorite rusty red colors, to go in and add some rust and grime to all kinds of places on the model, starting with the metal parts, but I also put some on the leather straps, several of the orange parts on the model, and just anywhere I thought could use a bit more shading or grime caked in. I then used a glaze of Parasite Brown, another one of my favorite rusty colors, to add a second layer of rusty variety to the metals. I used this color pretty sparsely and made sure to leave some room for the hull red to show through. While I had this color on my palette, I also used it to cover up all the areas of dirt on the bases of the figures. After making sure most of the paint on the figures was fully dry, I then used a small dry brush to give all of the metallic parts on the figure a dusting of silver paint. I like to wait until this step to add metallics because it gives a real rusty look, with all the edges of the metal parts looking worn down and shiny while still having layers of rust underneath. I used to always apply metallics first and then add grime and rust after the fact, but lately I've been using this method of putting the metallics on later for rusted metal which is a technique that was inspired heavily by the painter El Miniaturista on Instagram. Another tip I picked up from this painter was to then dry brush on some black paint after you dry brush the metal parts. I'm not sure why, but it really adds a nice dull rusted metal look to the metals on the figure and really has this effect of bringing the whole figure together afterwards. Finally, I broke out my pale sand to do some edge highlighting mostly on the metal parts of the figure, but also to any other parts that I thought needed a little bit of extra highlights. By the way, I pretty much used this same recipe for rusted metal on all of the terrain that comes in the set. So um, if you're looking for a tutorial on these things, uh, pretty much just use this same technique and then added some bright colors on afterwards. Next, I went in and reapplied the base color to any of the parts that got a metallic dry brush on them that I didn't want to look that metallic. 
This next step varies from orc to orc as I try to make each orc skin tone slightly different from each other, but on this specific one, I thought the skin could use a little bit more vibrancy, so I added another thin down layer of Iandin yellow. And while I was at it, I also uh, glazed on a little bit of yellow to the flames on the flamethrower to get that part of the paint job started. After this, I blended on some fluorescent pink to the areas around the flames to add another pop of color. And while I was at it, I also added a few other dashes of this color to various other parts of the figure to make the colors pop, especially on the purples. I applied fluorescent pink to all of the parts of purple and some of the other colors on one side of the figure, and then I also applied a blue glaze to the other side of the figure on the purples to try and get across this idea of a slight gradient in the purples to, again, match the key art where the purple isn't just purple, it's a gradient from blue, purple, pink. Finally, again, referencing the art, I thought this figure was missing a few pops of red. So I went in and used an opaque red color to paint a few of the little bits and bobs on the figure. Next, I added some Reichland flesh shade to shade any of the white parts on the model as well as just to any of the parts that I thought needed a little bit of extra shadow or grime. Rule number one of painting pretty much anything, if you want it to look a little bit weathered, just throw some Reichland Flash Shade on it. While I had this paint out, I also covered the entire base with a layer of Reichland Flash Shade. While I was waiting for that to dry, I used a matte black paint to base coat all of the scrap metal on the base of the model, as well as to any parts of the model that I thought needed a bit more deep shadow, such as the crevices on the face mask. Once this wash was dry, I cleaned up and re-highlighted all of these areas that needed it with some pale sand, and then used dark sand to dry brush the entire base of the model. I followed this up with an even lighter dry brush of pale sand on the base. I then painted all of these scrap metal plates on the base in uh, red, but still made sure to leave lots of black showing through to show that any of the pieces of metal on the base would have had their paint scraped off. And I also left a good amount of the scrap metal on the base just plain black. I then rimmed the bases with a matte black paint and our orcs are basically done. Of course, what is any orc warband without some extra bits of flair? So to finish up our orcs, I added some little bits of flair to each of the models. And something that I did for a lot of the models was to add some classic orc checkerboard effect to some of the pieces of equipment or metal parts on the figures. In order to do this, I first carefully painted on a grid using pale sand. And I want to encourage you to not worry too much if your lines are a bit shaky. Um, Orc painted this after all, so it doesn't really have to be perfect, and it probably shouldn't be perfect. After this, I colored in all the check marks in an alternating black and white fashion, taking my time, going back and forth, and just adding as many layers as I needed to to get the effect that I was going for. And if at the end you still aren't satisfied with how your checkerboard looks, just do what I did and add a layer of Reichland Flesh Shade on top and it will pretty much all blend together and look amazing. A few of the orcs on this kill team are wearing little orky t-shirts and I thought it might be fun to add some patterning to their shirts. Just so things didn't get too complex, I stuck to something pretty simple and gave a few of the orcs striped shirts. I started out with a base coat of dark sand on all the t-shirts and then once that color was dry, I gave all the t-shirts a Reichland flesh shade wash. Once this was dry, I followed this up by roughly painting on a striped pattern with our thinned down hull red color that we used for the rust on the metallics. Again, like with the checkerboard, there's no need to be too picky about making these stripes perfect at this stage. So just relax and have fun with it. Once the stripes are dry, we're going to use our pale sand to carefully paint on a random pattern of stitching that runs at a right angle to the stripes. We can be pretty random with this. I like to do clusters of two or three stripes in various spots and leave other spots wide open. Finally, we're going to apply an overall coat of Reichland Flesh Shade to the entire shirt. And when it's dry, it should blend the entire surface together nicely. And that's about it. That's pretty much all the techniques I used to paint my retro Halloween McDonald's themed kill team. I had just an absurd amount of fun painting these orcs and I really think this might be my favorite thing I've painted this year. Yeah, I think it might've been. 
This probably isn't the fastest way to paint up a whole bunch of orc boys, but it also doesn't take as long as you think. I think once I had the paint scheme down, I probably averaged about 90 minutes per figure. If you have any other questions about how I painted specific orcs in the kill team or things that I missed covering in this video, please let me know down in the comments. Before we go, I'd like to extend a huge thank you to my lovely patrons on Patreon. Patreon is the real reason I'm able to make long-form painting guides like this that aren't reliant on sponsorships or ads or anything like that. So I really appreciate all of your support. And this week, I would especially like to thank Kid Kaiju and Donald Dooley. If you'd like to see your name up here, get access to our exclusive Discord server, or get a 3D model, all kinds of weird stuff, you can do so over at <laughs> patreon.com slash Dana Howell. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the Unbelievable. I'm on to you, Howl. You can get a different one each week until... Ha!